Hi there, my name is Michael and this is Michael Helwig Interiors. Welcome in if you're here new and welcome back if you're a returning guest. I appreciate you coming back to spend some more time with me. I'm a design pro and I talk primarily about little rooms, small rooms, with awkward and tricky layouts. And uh, this is where I share all of my thoughts on how to arrange and decorate little rooms with not so little challenges. So if you have a little room that's throwing you, you're in the right place. Today, my friends, we're going to be talking about this room that I'm in right here. So this is my home office and this is where all of my little creativity stuff happens. And this is sort of where my, um, you know, the headquarters of my company is. So fun fact, when I bought my house, the people that lived here before me considered this the dining room. So when I was looking at my electric panel, it was funny that I was like looking at, you know, where all of the breakers were for the different rooms and things like that. And I kept noticing the dining room and I'm going, okay, my house is an 800 square foot house. I don't have a dining room. So I finally figured out that it was this room here that they were talking about. And so basically, uh, this room doesn't have a closet, so it's not technically a bedroom. It's right off of my kitchen. So that is actually great because it is it allows me to kind of like, you know, have full access to the whole house and everything else. But it's a nice space that, um, you know, is, is convenient for getting up, getting a cup of tea and anything else that I might want when I want to bring it into this to this space here. So we're going to be talking about how to lay out a little room like this. Uh, how to kind of call inspiration from different places and compile it in so that you're kind of organized and figure out which way to go and how things should look. And we're going to kind of go through a few of the little trip ups that I had when it came to arranging the space and how I got it to be the way I wanted it to be and the reasons why behind all that stuff. So it's going to be kind of a creative sort of like uh, look at the whole process of how to decorate a small room like this. So if you're interested in that, I'd love for you to spend some time to stick around because we're going to get right into that right after this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to talk about is having some uh, a wish list. So basically, it's the must-haves in your space. So you want to kind of create a list of things, or you know, if you're a visual person, you're going to pull in some pictures and things like that. But for me, I just I kind of created a list. So obviously, if it's a home office, I needed a desk. So that's why I put this desk in here. It's not a huge desk, as I mentioned before, but it is just basically enough space for me to work. I also wanted some display and storage. So behind me, I wanted to have, you know, as a backdrop for videos and as a backdrop for when I'm conferencing with clients, I wanted to have something kind of nice and pretty to look at behind me. So I wanted something that was going to give me some spots to put things that were meaningful to me or things that I just wanted for decor and things like that. But I also wanted to have some storage in it too. So underneath, you can barely barely see there's there's like cabinet doors behind here too so basically what the cabinet doors do is allow me to hide all the sins so basically that's where all of the stuff that I don't want to display goes so it's like my surplus of books I got so many books like you can't believe I put them in the cabinet and they're kind of peppered throughout the rest of the house and things like that too but most of that stuff goes back there so all the things that I don't really want to focus on go into that cabinet so tip number one for creating a space like this is to have open storage and also some closed storage, open display and closed storage. So the things that you don't want to focus on kind of go into closed storage. So that's, that's a good way to do it. Another thing that I wanted to do was to have a, uh, some place to put ideas up. So I have bulletin boards. I also have a whiteboard. So basically this is the business side of things and it's not really, you know, things like this are not really that pretty to look at. So basically this is where I would pin up all my different ideas. So I'm looking at it right now. I don't have anything on it currently because I'm in between a project right now. And so things that I would consider putting up there, uh, for example, for the first of the year, I'm going to put up my vision board. So basically it's going to be all the things that I want to accomplish in the next 12 months. And it could be pictures from all over the place. I'm going to snip things out. I'm going to put things up in magazines. That's going to be where I'm going to put a lot of my visual inspiration for things. And so for me, that was very important. I wanted a big display for visual stuff that I can pin up there. I also needed a whiteboard to kind of write out some of my ideas. So things like step-by-step -step things, different ideas for videos, things that I want to kind of focus on for blog posts, uh, how I want to tweak my website. That's basically what's up on my whiteboard right now is things that I want to tweak on the website. Um, I also wanted to have a calendar. So basically the calendar is going to keep me kind of going on the days of the week and things like that. So basically it's going to have all of my appointments that I have with clients. Anything that I have that's outside of my business stuff goes on the calendar as well. So family members that I got to take different places, 
those all go up on the calendar. So for me, having a whiteboard sort of calendar that I can erase and write in every month and all my little appointments keeps me kind of organized. So that helps me quite a bit. Um, I also wanted to have a comfortable chair. So basically, as you can see back here, my little fur monster, Marky, is on the chair. That used to be my chair. Now it is her chair. So I wanted a space where I could read. And so in the beginning, that's what I used to do, but now she's decided that that is her space. And so her blankie is up there and her pillow is up there. And so she sleeps and snores very loudly when I'm rambling on and on, which is pretty much all the time. So that's kind of um, a spot for her to be. And also the last thing I wanted to do was have lighting. So I have a ceiling fan with a light. Now I'm not a huge fan of ceiling fans, but I think that they're super, super functional. I don't have central air in my house. So having a ceiling fan in the summertime is essential. And I can reverse it and kind of bring the heat down a little bit too in the winter time. So it kind of is functional that way. So even though I don't love them aesthetically, I like the functionality of them. So I don't plan to change that out. However, I did have a lamp on my desk, which was kind of big and bulky and it didn't really serve me very well. Um, I Because of the desk isn't so big, I wanted a little bit more elbow room. So what I did was I took that lamp off of my desk, I put it in another room, and I got two wall-mounted sconces that go up really high above my bulletin boards, which are in front of me, and that light shines down on my desk from above, giving me enough space to work at night and do the things that I need to do. Having, you know, I basically have them on all the time too, even if it's a bright sunny day, I put the lights on because it just helps me to see what I'm doing. I'm getting older, so I need I need you know a little bit of help in that direction too. So those are the things that really were important to me. So for the wish list, I needed a desk, display and storage, visual inspiration area with bulletin boards and whiteboards and things like that. I needed a comfy chair for things that I wanted to do like read and relax. And I also wanted overhead lighting so that I could keep things going and do all the things that I need to do. So the next thing that you do for a space is actually to measure and to sketch out your space. So first you sketch out your space, then second you measure. And I'm going to show you now what I mean by that. So when you go to sketch out your room, I suggest that you stand in the center of the room and you kind of take a, a quick glance around to see where everything is located. So, you know, you want to look at where your doorway is. You want to look at where your windows are. You want to look at different things like if you have bump outs or bump ins to the space. You want to be able to see those so that you can kind of position those on your sketch paper. Um, and so basically you're not going to be doing like an artist rendering of, of the room. You're just going to be basically doing a sketch of the space. So in my case for this particular room, I'm lucky I'm actually, I've just got a, a rectangular room. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a rectangle here on the paper. I'm not going to uh, get too fussy with it. So it's just going to be a basic rectangle. So you'll be able to see kind of things as I'm going through. Um, I am going to do an electronic version of it too, so that you can kind of see where things are and kind of the reason why I position things the way I did position them. Ultimately, um, there are specific reasons why I think they're interesting. Hopefully you will too. So anyway, there's your, there's a sketch of this particular room. So as I'm looking in this room, on the shorter sides, on the shorter walls, I have uh, a window on this side. So basically it's a window in the center of this wall over here. This is how I draw a window, nothing fancy. In the corner of this wall over here, as we're entering in, this is the doorway. And then the doorway opens into the room this way. So that's how I indicate that that's the swing of the door. Okay, so those are the two main uh, features of the of the room, architectural features. There is one more as well. So I do have a radiator in this corner over here and it can't be moved. So basically there's a radiator cover on it and it's quite nice. Um, but I can't really do a whole lot with this corner of the room, unfortunately, this corner over here. So that's the corner that I have to kind of pay more attention to because I'm not gonna be able to put a lot of furniture in that in that place over there. So things are going to have to go other places. And that is basically how you sketch out a room. It's really simple. So then what you want to do at that point is you want to measure all of the spaces. So there's a little bit of a space between this corner and the corner of the door. So I'm going to get that measurement. I want to measure the width of the door here. And then I'm going to measure from this position to this corner. So that is one, two, three measurements for that wall. Does that make sense? 
So basically it's not just a solid wall. You want to measure all of those spaces in between little things so that you get the right, uh, the right dimensions for each, each one of those spaces. So on this wall here, this is a big unobstructed wall. So basically when I keep talking in my, in my blogs about unobstructed walls, unobstructed walls, and your biggest furniture goes in an unobstructed wall. This is what I'm talking about. This is, this is the biggest wall in the space that doesn't have something on it. And that's where you want to put probably the majority of the furniture. Now there is this obstruction over here, which when you flip it around this way, you want to do this measurement between the wall and where that radiator cover kind of meets the wall. And then also on the other side of the radiator cover to the corner of the window, you want to measure the width of the window. And then you want to go from that window to the corner over here. So this wall now has one, two, three, four, five measurements. When we look at this corner, we're going to go from this corner to this corner. Now, this is technically another unobstructed wall, but you have the door that pops up into the space. So technically, the door is going to kind of come to about right here in the room. So you, you really don't have that full length of that wall. So that's why I kind of consider that to be something to kind of look out for. You really don't want to put something right here that's going to, you know, uh, be in the way of this if you can help it. So that is how you measure a room. And uh, that is basically where you're gonna get all of your measurements from, all of those positions. So I'll be back in a second with what, uh, what that turns out to be. So okay, now after that I have measured the room, um, I have four inches in that little space between the wall and the door, 32 inches on the door, 82 inches for the balance of that wall. That makes it 118 inches or nine foot eight inches on this entire wall. So when we go over onto the long wall, I had 133 inches or 11 foot one inch. Uh, flip it over to the other side and it is two inches between the wall and the corner of the radiator, 32 and a quarter inches for the width of the radiator, 3.25 inches in between the window and the radiator. Now this looks like so much more than that. So even if your sketch looks like there's so much more space, I would always say trust your tape measure because that's what's really gonna give you the true dimension of what's going on in that space. So looks can be deceiving. Your sketch, my sketch, um, is not a masterpiece. And so basically you're just, you're, you're kind of filling in this space. So 42 inches for the width of the window and then 38 and a half inches for the balance of that wall between that edge of the window and the wall. Of course, the 133 on that side, uh, paying more attention again to that little corner where the door is gonna pop into the space. So basically your door is gonna, is going to take up this much space because it's going to open into that area here. So that does not give you that full 133 inches on that wall. Okay, so that is basically how you measure the room and that is how you kind of map out your dimensions for the space as well. So what this is going to do, you know, it's going to give you all of these dimensions. So if you're out shopping for furniture, you're going to have all of these dimensions on a piece of paper or on a picture in your phone so that you'll be able to kind of you know, pull up those those pictures or or that, uh, you know, if you have a, a like a swipe file, I kind of keep a swipe file in my car every once in a while. If I want to just kind of keep paper notes of things, it's great to just take a picture of this, as I said, with your phone, and then you can kind of zoom into that particular wall and you'll be able to see that, yes, this is your longest wall. So if this was, say, a living room, you'll be able to put a couch over here or the bedroom. Perhaps the bed would go in this position here because that would be probably the largest thing in the space. So those are what you have to think about when you're out like looking for furniture in different places so that you know, you know, that you've only got 82 inches between the door and here and you probably don't want to get something huge that's going to take up that entire 82 inches where it's going to impede a little bit of breathing room on this doorway here. So you want to kind of be mindful of those things. So that's kind of what I do on my phone. I keep everything on a, you know, in my pictures and I can bring everything up and see how much space I have everywhere and my floor plan so that I know that I'm not buying something too big or too small for the space. And that's really the key to the whole, the whole puzzle. All right. So you can see how important it is to sketch out your space exactly the way it looks in, in the room. So basically as you're looking at it from above, sketching out the shape of the room, any bump out, 
bumped ins, things like that, that are kind of not going to be able to move. In my case, it's the radiator. The door isn't going to move where it is. The window isn't going to move from where it is. So those are the things that you really want to take notice of on your on your sketch and to measure out all those spaces so that when you're out, you know, looking for furniture or kind of bringing things in that you already have so that you know that they're going to fit as the way that you're intending them to fit into those spaces. So those are that's basically why it's really important to sketch out your room. It's all part of the plan. So the next thing that you want to do is you want to take pictures of all the walls in your space. So you're basically going to, again, stand in the middle of your room, take a picture of the wall in front of you, turn, take a picture of that wall, turn the other way, take a picture of that wall, take a picture of the wall behind you. So you want to have all four walls in your in your photographs. The reason why you want to do this is measurements and sketches are great. And you know, when you have all of those things on your phone that you can reference when you're out buying furniture or considering, you know, the placement of things, that's wonderful. But if you're not at home in the space, you can kind of remember <clears throat> how big the rooms are, how big that wall is. So sometimes when you have your sketch, kind of like what happened with me with that little space between the radiator and the window, that space looks much bigger on my sketch than it actually is. So say, for example, you have a, a wall that you think is much bigger because of your sketch than it actually is. Having the pictures that you can refer back to is really what's going to keep you from making a mistake and buying a furniture piece that might be too big, kind of jumping the gun and doing that. So it's a visual reference. It's a 3D reference. And that's always important to have when you're doing some shopping for things that are going to fit into the room. Now, the next thing you want to think about is creating a two scale floor plan. So what that really means is that your floor plan is mimicking the size of your room. It is actually measured out and specifically laid out in a piece of paper or an electronic format that is the size of your room so that you know that the things that you're going to consider putting into the space are going to fit. So I'm going to show you basically in my uh, floor planner program how to do this electronically. Let me know if in a future video you'd like to see me show you how to do this as a paper version too. So if you don't want to invest in a floor planning software or you don't have access to doing a floor planning software, or maybe you don't want to even learn how to do a floor planning software, that's that's not an issue. I can show, I can show you how to do this on a piece of paper too. So let's let me show you electronically what I'm talking about when I when I speak about a two scale floor plan and what all of that entails. So here we are in the electronic floor plan. The thing I like about this program is that it allows me to see things kind of flat here on the screen, but it also allows me to look at things in three dimension, which is pretty great because then you can spin your room around and see all the different little things. As you can see here, this room is very small. Um, so I have my radiator in the corner over here. I've got that window, which is kind of up you know, pretty far up on the wall. It's a uh, awning style window. And then there's a door to get in over here. So what that means is, you know, it makes it a little bit tough to put furniture over here by the radiator side. Uh, makes it really kind of tough also to have furniture near the door because you don't really want to block the entrance into the room. So you don't want anything big and bulky on this wall over here. You really can't have anything really super big over here because you run the chance of walking into it when you're walking into the room. So that really just leaves this room, uh, this wall over here in the room, which is not, you know, the most unobstructed wall because it still does have the radiator on it. So you kind of have to be mindful of what you're going to put over here. So I'll show you what I came up with. Uh, first, I want to take Take the walls away really quick just so I can kind of show you when I'm putting things through what I'm talking about. So first thing I like to do in any space is I like to put a rug in. Rugs will define the space. Um, in a small room I always love to put a big rug in. I don't know what it is about it. I just think that putting a, a large rug into a smaller room really does make a lot of sense because it just gives you a much bigger I guess placement to put furniture on. It's a much bigger footprint and it really defines the space a lot better too. So in this room, the way I have it, I did put this bigger rug in. Um, it has a pattern to it. It's got my inspiration basically for the rest of the decor in this space too. Now, when I was messing around with where I should put my, um, my desk, I had an idea of maybe putting it over here. I didn't really love the way that that looked when you kind of walked into the space. It was kind of like, you know, eh, doesn't really work so well there. It, it doesn't make much sense uh, being in that position. Um, I don't mind seeing the desk from this area. Like this is my kitchen out here, so I don't mind seeing my desk. You know, when I when I'm basically um, walking into the space, it doesn't it doesn't bother me. I also do not like to put anything where you have your um, 
Let's see if I can do it this way. Where you have your back to the door. So I'm not a big fan of a desk in this position either because your back then is to the wall. So base, or your back is to the door, I should say. So when you're walking in, first thing you see is this this wall over here, um, but you're you're not facing the door or you're not you don't really see what's coming into the door, which it's just one of those things I don't really like. I find it a little um, I don't know a little unnerving. Call me kooky, whatever. So what I ended up doing was I put my desk on this wall over here. Um, see if I can straighten this out just a little bit more here. So I put my desk on this wall and that really gave me a position for this wall being like the focal wall back here. So basically when you look at this and you're walking into this space, there's your desk. Okay, so that's it's not any bigger than this. This desk that I'm sitting at now is, is quite small. I didn't want a super huge desk. I didn't want anything that took up this whole amount of space because it just didn't um, it didn't appeal to me. I don't really need a huge working space because I do everything pretty much electronically, so I don't need space to spread out papers and this and that. I just I basically have everything in a digital format. So that was what I needed. So then of course I put my chair in there as well. And then I had this little, um, this a little cabinet here. So basically, I thought of maybe putting the cabinet over here on this side. Um, again, I thought that that could work. I didn't think that, that was such a bad place for it to be. I don't think that it's gorgeous, but I also don't think that it's completely unfunctional. I do like the idea of having a little bit more space over here, so maybe in the future I'll think about putting it back over this way. But originally what I had thought of for the space was I needed, as you, if we go back to my wish list for the space, I should say, I needed to have a comfortable place to sit. I wanted to have a spot for a chair and things like that. So basically what I did was I put the little green cabinet, which is about the same depth as my radiator cover, onto this wall here. Now, of course, it's not centered underneath the window. That doesn't bother me. I don't mind that at all. Um, I do have other decor and a lamp and everything over here on this side, so that didn't really make a difference to me at all. Um, this also gave me access to it, so I can kind of scoot my chair back, I'm chair and wheels. I can scoot it over here if I need to get into this cabinet, come back over this way. Super easy, very accessible, which left me with uh, this bigger larger blank wall back here. So what I did with that was I put in a cabinet. So basically what you're going to see behind me all the time is my little kind of display cabinet with my two Etoger shelves on either side. I did something interesting with these shelves. I took the backs off of them and I made it so that you can see the wall behind it because I created a focal wall. And you can't really see it in the graphic. <coughs> Excuse me. You can't really see it in the graphic here, but the cabinets, or the shelves don't have any um, backings to them. So you can basically see that chip lap behind, um, behind there, which is good. I like that a lot. It just makes things feel more spacious. When you can kind of see through things like an Etagere shelf like this, it's going to make the room feel a little bit bigger. So that's the reason why I did that. And that gave me a nice place to have a backdrop for when I'm doing my Zoom calls with clients and when I'm filming my videos and things like that. It gives me a nice little kind of focal point back here, which is always good. So that left me with this space for my comfortable chair. So we're going to bring that in last here. I had this little chair that kind of goes over here. It's a skinny chair. I had mentioned that my dog Marky loves this chair. Of course, she sits in it all the time. And... I'm not even sure if the audio is picking it up, but she's sitting behind me in the chair, snoring like a buzzsaw, which is really kind of funny. And then I had enough space over here for a little table, and that is basically how I laid out my room. I did, as I said before, kind of put things in different positions. I just like the way that this looks. This is balanced over here. You've got a nice focal point on the wall over here. Not a whole lot that you can do with this corner over here. So I put a lamp and a mirror on the wall on this side. I have a hanging pendant light over here above the chair. My little gallery wall, which is something that I also wanted on my uh, wish list. It actually came out in my, um, in my mood board for the space, is to have a place to put things interesting little you know photos and things like that and sayings and whatnot that I wanted to put up on the wall and I wanted to kind of make it so that all of the frames were, were black so I have touches of black in my decor, touches of black in my frames on the wall. I also have a little bit of black in the carpet. This isn't the exact carpet but this is probably the closest one I had to my graphic. 
So what I did also, just to kind of make this a little bit more clear, is I, I actually moved my rug up a little bit further so that the, the edge of the rug is actually right in front of my bigger cabinet in the back here. So it's quite further away from these two smaller ones on the side, but it's right in front of the bigger cabinet in the back there. So basically what that does is just gives me a little bit more breathing room. And um, I, it, I don't mind it being kind of underneath the, the desk, sort of more so on that wall. This is the wall that I have my bulletin boards in. This is where all of my audio and video and lighting and everything like that is. It's all out in the open. I have it most of it kind of contained into a basket. I also have some client samples and stuff like that over here. And I do have a small filing cabinet that's on wheels that I can wheel in and out when I need to, which is really nice and convenient. Um, but again, this is the business side of the room. So it's not the pretty side of the room. This is basically where all of my uh, pictures that I pin up and everything else is. And my whiteboard is over here. My calendar for the month is over here. I like having it off of my desk so that I can just basically glance over at my calendar over here, figure out what I'm doing for that day. If I have appointments coming up that week, I'll, I'll know, things like that. It just keeps me visually organized because I'm a very visual person. So that is basically the layout for the room. And I think that it turned out pretty good. I'm very happy with it. It functions extremely well for me. And um, once you'll see the big reveal at the end, I'll show you exactly what it looks like in reality as opposed to virtual reality. So this next part I think is the most fun part of the whole project and that is the mood board. Now I don't want you to skip this part because it is important and a lot of people will think that oh it's just a little bit you know it's a little too super superfluous to kind of get into but it really isn't. It really kind of is the roadmap for how you want your room to look and you can change things in and out. You can tweak things if you need to. That's really the beauty of a mood board, especially if it's an electronic format. Now you can do a collage format too if you decide that you want to kind of cut things out from printouts that you print off the internet or magazine things that you find that you want to put together. That's great too. Do it that way. I prefer to do things electronically so all of my stuff comes in as snippets from here and there from all different places. Um, so when it comes to the mood board, it's important to kind of see how things are going to look together. So in your mood board, you're going to put things in like your paint color. You're going to put things in like your floor color. You're going to put things in uh, like the decor that you're choosing. So basically you want to start with the things that don't kind of come out of the room. So your floor, your wall color, those are more of the semi-permanent things that you're going to have in the space. And those are the, the base layers of things that you want to kind of decorate around. The next thing you're going to pull in are things like your area rug. So what I like to do is I like to find one inspiration piece. It could be a blanket. It could be a pillow. It could be a, uh, a carpet or an area rug. It could be a piece of art. It could be a piece of pottery. It could be a piece of decor that you put on your shelves. Those are the things that you want to look for to bring into your mood board. And they're a jumping off point for how you are going to design your space. So for me, my current space, this current iteration of the space, happened because of this area rug that I have. So basically I took the area rug and I pulled the colors out of the area rug for different things. The area rug informed things like that little pillow that is on the chair next to Marky. It informed all of the art that's in the space. It also informed, you know, some of the finishes that I have. So for example, originally um, my desk had a silver, like a brushed nickel finish to it. And I have a small cabinet in the corner over here that had a painted green knob on it. So I wanted to kind of marry those two things together. They were from completely different places. But what I did to bring them together was I unified them with the brushed, actually it's, it's a polished brass knob that goes on both of those. I also have a little trash can next to my desk that has that same polished brass finish to it. And then I peppered the rest of it around the space, as you can see, a couple little things like a planter, some, you know, I've got like some decor back here that has that polished brass or that brass type goldish finish to it that I wanted to introduce also into the space. So keeping your mood board um, full of things that you are inspired by and also how you want your room to look is really going to keep things you know, on track with, with, your, with your project. And you don't want to skip this part. Like I said, you want to make it fun and you can tweak it and pull things in and, and, and you know, edit things out if you want to. That's all part of the process. All right, so all of that leads me right up to how it all came together. So this is the big reveal. Now, of course, you can kind of see what the room looks like, but you're only getting one camera angle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how the room looks 
all the good, the bad, and the ugly. So you're going to see the pretty part of the room, and then I'm going to sweep it around, and you're going to see the business part of the room, which isn't the most pretty part. But I'm going to show you that it is kind of laid out functionally the way I need it to be laid out, and that's going to happen right now. So there it is, the big reveal. I'd love to know what you think. Leave me a comment below and tell me what you thought of the room. It's not a super huge room, like I said, so it is a small room, and that's all that we talk about here. Basically, it's little rooms with bigger challenges. Uh, so to recap things, if you're going to go and design a room, you're going to want to have a wish list. So you're going to want to be able to write out the things that you need and want to do in the space. You want to sketch out and measure your room so that you know kind of where things are, how your, how your walls are laid out. If you have bump ins or bump outs, angled walls, anything that's going to be tricky or awkward, you want to make note of that on your sketch. Then you want to measure all of those spots on your floor plan so that you know how big those wall segments are. So that comes in handy, of course, when you're out buying furniture or planning your room to make sure that you're going to know how things are going to fit in that space for things that you already have and for things that you're thinking about purchasing. You want to do some before pictures, whether your room is completely empty or it has all kinds of stuff 
in it. You just want to have some pictures on your phone or places that you can access while you're out making decisions so that you know how big that wall is or how far that doorway kind of cuts into that wall or where that window is, how far up on the wall it is. You want to have some visual references for things too so that you can kind of make some better planned out decisions for you know for your space when you're on the fly and doing things. You also want to have a, a floor plan, some sort of an electronic floor plan or an analog floor plan that is on a piece of paper that is to scale for your room because your sketch can lead you down a wrong path if you feel like you have too much space or more space than you actually think that you have in a, in a specific spot. Even though you have measurements on it, sometimes you're just looking at the floor plan that you that you sketched out and you're thinking, oh yeah, I got plenty of space there. There's, there's a lot of you know room between that window and that radiator or that wall and that bump out and things like that. You really want to make sure that you have those those two scale measurements and that floor plan really kind of mapped out specifically so that you know uh, how big things are going to fit into that space. And then the last part, of course, you want to create a mood board so that you can see how all the things fit together and how to bring it all together so that it all makes sense. And if you need to edit some things out, you can certainly do that easily. And, uh, you know, it's, it's there to help you kind of keep you on a roadmap from point A to Z on your journey of decorating your room. So do me a favor. If you like this video, I'd love for you to give me a like and to also subscribe. Uh, if you need a little bit more information, please feel free to go visit me over at Michael Helwig Interiors. I've got a pretty wonderful blog over there that has all kinds of different tips and tricks for little spaces and awkward rooms and tricky layouts and all kinds of stuff that you can think about. And it's got everything from, you know, floor planning all the way up to decor and everything else. So there's, it's a pretty good resource over there if you want to go check that out for me. Until next week, I uh, appreciate your time and thank you so much for stopping by. I post new videos every Sunday, so if you want to keep checking me out, you can certainly do that as well. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Take care. Mm -hmm.